Good to be with you as Peter Ballas here, cardiologist, and just a quick message to say a big thank you to all of you who are supporting the channel and providing great comments and feedback and just taking the time to view some of the content that we have and glad to hear that it is useful and relevant. So thank you very, very much. Now, a common question that I often get asked is what are the different types of heart stents that we use? Well, today I want to focus on the distinction between a bare metal and a drug eluting stent. So stents are these metal devices that are used to open up arteries of the heart. Now stents can be used in other applications. For example, urologists place stents when there might be problems with the ureter or stones, kidney stones, and stents act as a scaffold to keep the ureter open. Well, essentially that's exactly what they do in the arteries of the heart. And there are two main reasons why we place stents to treat blockages in the arteries. That is, firstly, when there is a blockage that occurs suddenly as a result of a heart attack, well, then it is critical that the artery is opened and blood is restored to minimize the damage to the heart muscle. Well, stents are essential in that environment. And secondly, stents are useful for those patients who continue to experience a symptom called angina, whereby chest pressure or tightness develops with exertion or shortness of breath when you're pushing yourself, and that is not adequately controlled with medication, well then stents can assist in propping open a blockage and improving blood flow. Now the two main classifications of heart stents are bare metal stents, and drug eluting stents. Now the first stents that we used to treat blockages around the heart were these bare metal stents. And the first stent was actually placed in 1986. Now, as the name suggests, bare metal stents implies that the stent or the scaffold, the spring that we use to treat the blockage is made of a metal. And that's it. The metal often is stainless steel. That's an alloy, stainless steel. But modern day stents are made of various different types of alloys with different materials. And they all have useful properties at making the stents more conformable to the artery, able to bend to get down into blockages, and also to make them thinner. So what we want in a stent is we want a thin device, but that is strong enough to keep the artery open and to resist the constant heartbeat and the pumping of the heart. Now, bare metal stents were the original stents that were used back in the mid 80s and 90s. And that means that the stent itself has no underlying or coating it's purely the metal that is sterilized and then introduced into the artery to treat the blockage. And the results, no doubt, were much, much better for patients who'd had a bare metal stent compared to those who just had a balloon placed to treat the blockage. Because in the majority of cases, when we put a plain balloon to treat a blockage, most of the times the artery renarrows. Well, when bare metal stents came out, it was a revolution. They reduced the risk of renarrowing significantly. But over time, we found that even when we placed these bare metal stents, the body would form an aggressive reaction against the stent, and there would be a higher risk that the stent would often renarrow and close up again, causing recurring symptoms. And that risk Depending on various studies, it can be around 30%, but in some studies, even more than 50% of patients who have a bare metal stent placed 
are at risk of developing re-narrowing or re-stenosis. So then in 2003, there was a revolution that then changed bare metal stents by applying a coating, a specific type of drug coating over the stent material. And the role of that drug was to act as an anti-rejection drug or a drug that would help reduce inflammation or the body's reaction against the device. And those stents are known as drug eluting stents. Now, as I mentioned, they were first used uh, in 2003, and we've had various generations of these drug eluting stents. So, for example, the stents that we were placing back in 2003 and 2004 are no longer placed for patients nowadays because there have been you know, generational changes and improvements in stent technologies, various types of drugs that are used, and the materials that make up the stent that have seen better outcomes for patients compared to those who received the first generation stent. So when we talk about drug eluting stents, this is you know, in a nutshell, the same as a bare metal stent, a piece of metal, a spring, but with added technology that allows a particular type of coating to be placed over that metal. And then within that coating or polymer, a particular drug that slowly gets absorbed in the artery wall over normally the first few months, you know, three to six months. And that drug acts to reduce the body's response against the stent to allow the artery to heal, but not to form considerable tissue to cause re-narrowing. So drug eluting stents have significantly reduced the risk of re-narrowing, down to 10%, but even less than 5% in most modern day stents a risk of re-narrowing is significantly lower with drug eluting stents. And although practices around the world do vary, the general consensus is that bare metal stents don't have much of a role nowadays when we have such good drug eluting stents with very low complication rates. So, Again, that was just a short video to talk a little about what the two different types of stent classes are. The first generation introduced back in the mid 80s and then 90s were the bare metal stents. And then that has seen from 2003 onwards, a next generation type of stent that has this drug action on it to help reduce the risks of renarrowing, meaning that in the majority of cases, stents perform well with very, very low risk of complications. Until the next video, bye for now.